In this video, I'm going to compare the Onion architecture to the Clean architecture so that you can see what the differences are. And then I'm going to show you a practical implementation using both the Onion architecture and the Clean architecture so that you can see how they look like on a real project. I'm going to start by comparing the Onion architecture to the Clean architecture on a conceptual level. We're going to look at some diagrams and see how they are actually very similar. And then I'm going to show you a practical implementation using both of these architectures. So let's start with the Onion architecture. I'm starting with the Onion architecture on purpose, and this is because it was created before the Clean architecture. The Onion architecture first appeared in 2008, and it was coined by Jeffrey Palermo. Now here's what the high-level diagram of the architecture looks like represented as concentric circles. At the core of the architecture you have your domain entities which encapsulate the most important business logic of the system. One layer above the domain entities you have the repository interfaces. The repositories represent your gateway to the domain entities and allow you to interact with them and persist them in the database. One level above of the repository interfaces you have your service interfaces which are allowed to reference the repository interfaces which sit one level below and the services also encapsulate any business logic that is part of the system but doesn't belong to the repositories. In the outermost layer of the Onion architecture you have your infrastructure concerns such as your database, file storage, cloud storage and so on. Then you have the user interface which can be an ASP.NET Core MVC application or just a web API and you've also got your unit tests, integration tests, functional tests, and so on. The most important thing about the Onion architecture, and you're going to see this in the Clean architecture also, is the direction of dependencies. Notice how all of the layers are only pointing their arrows inwards. So the repository interfaces are referencing the domain entities. The service interfaces are referencing the repository interfaces. And all of the components on the external ring of the architecture are referencing the components inside. In the Onion architecture, you're also allowed to reference layers that are deeper inside of the architecture. So the infrastructure layer could also reference the repository interfaces, and this will most definitely be the case because it will have to hold the implementations, but it can also reference the domain entities. Jeffrey Palermo also coined the four tenets of the Onion architecture, and let's take a look at what they are. These are the four tenets of the Onion architecture, and I'm just going to quickly read them one by one. So the application is built around an independent object model. These are your domain entities, and the application is built around them. Inner layers define interfaces, outer layers implement interfaces. You could also see this from the diagram in the previous slide. The direction of the coupling is towards the center. This is also something that I mentioned. And all application core code can be compiled and run separate from the infrastructure. Now this part is debatable because you can't run the application core without the implementations, but you can compile it because you're depending on the interfaces. Now let's take a look at the clean architecture and see how it compares to the onion architecture. Clean architecture was created in 2012 by Robert C. Martin also known as Uncle Bob. In many ways, clean architecture is just a repackaging of the older architectural approaches, such as the hexagonal and the onion architecture, which is why you're going to see many of the concepts that I just mentioned duplicated also inside of the clean architecture. Now let's examine what we have on the diagram. At the core of the clean architecture, you have your entities, which is also the same as the onion architecture. The entities contain the enterprise business rules, and then on top of the entities, you have your application use cases. You will also see this represented as the application layer, and it contains the application business rules. Essentially, what the use cases do is they orchestrate the domain entities to perform the business logic. On top of the use cases, you have your external concerns. These are called controllers, gateways, and presenters, and they just represent interface adapters to the use cases. And then on the outskirts of the clean architecture, you have your database, your external interfaces, the user interface, and your web API. The same principles that were present in the Onion architecture are also there in the clean architecture, especially in terms of direction of dependencies. The inner layers of the clean architecture aren't allowed to reference the outer layers and the outer layers can reference the inner layers. Now, having said that, let's take a look at the Onion architecture and the clean architecture side by side. 
Here's what these two architectures look like side by side, and you can begin to see similarities between them, mainly that you have the domain entities at the core of both of the architectures. The clean architecture has use cases, whereas the onion architecture has repository and service interfaces. And then the external concerns are similar with both of these architectures. So now that you have a high level idea of what these architectures are, let's see how they look like implemented on a real project. I'm going to start with the Onion architecture and show you what it looks like when you implement it on a real project. This is a very simplified example of a newsletters API and we're going to start from the core of the Onion architecture. I split the core into two projects. One is the domain project which contains my NEDs and I have just one entity inside which contains a few basic properties describing an article. Then I have the repositories folder, which contains my repository interfaces. So if you remember the diagram of the Onion architecture, the domain project is representing the two innermost layers with the domain entities and the repository interfaces. The article repository interface defines the methods that you can do with the article entity, one for inserting an article to the database, one for fetching an article by the ID, and one more method for updating an article. And then we have the application layer, which implements our application services, and it also references the domain project. I'm going to show you an article service, which uses the article repository interface that we define in the domain layer, and the service encapsulates some business logic related to the article entity. In this example, I have two simple methods. One is a method for creating an article, so we're just creating a new entity, inserting the entity to the database using the repository, and returning a result from our service method. We also have one more method for publishing an article. So we first need to fetch the article from the database, check if it's null or not, update the publish time, and then just persist these changes to the database using the article repository. Let's recap how this is respecting the Onion architecture principles. First of all, we are only referencing the domain project, which sits one level below the application project or our application services. We're also not depending on any external concerns because we are using dependency injection to obtain an interface to the repository, which is going to let us interact with the database. But again, the application service doesn't know what the implementation of this repository is. I also have one more example in the application layer of defining a query. So I want to create a query to return an article response which you can fetch by specifying the article identifier. This is an example where we just define a service interface in the application layer, in this case, the get article by ID query handler interface, and the implementation of this interface is going to live in the persistence project. So let's take a look at the external folder and see what I have inside. I'm going to temporarily close the core project and let's observe the external folder. So inside of it, I have two projects. One is the persistence and the other is the API or presentation project. You can call it whichever way you like. So let's first examine the persistence project. Inside of it, you're going to define your object relational mapper. In this case, I'm using Entity Framework Core, so I'm going to define my database context. It only contains one entity and any relevant configuration for this entity. Then you're going to see the implementations of the service interfaces that we define in the layers below. So first of all, we have the article repository implementation, and you can see that we're implementing the insert, get, and update methods. And I also have an implementation of the query interface. In this case, we have the get article by ID query handler class, and it's going to implement the handle method to fetch the article response based on the specified article identifier. So if you recall, one of the core tenets of the Onion architecture is that the inner layers define the interfaces and the outer layers define the implementations of this interface. And then how you use these services is from your presentation or API project where I define a set of minimal API endpoints. And here I'm using the abstractions that I defined in the core layer of the Onion architecture. Notice that I'm using the article service directly because there's really no point in defining an interface this service is self-contained and only has a dependency on a few repositories that are implemented in the persistence project. So it's okay to use classes to represent your services. You don't need to have interfaces for everything. The implementation of these endpoints is very straightforward. We're just passing the request to the methods of the article service. And here's our get 
article by ID query handler interface, which you inject to obtain an article instance, and then you return an appropriate response from the API. And one more thing I want to touch on is the dependency injection. I'm just registering these services as scope dependencies because they all depend on our EF core database context, which is a scoped service. So I want to prevent any bugs during runtime. And now I'm going to switch to a different solution where I'm implementing the same project only using the clean architecture. And I'm going to show you how this looks like starting from the core of the clean architecture. And you'll see that this is pretty much unchanged from the onion architecture. So we still have our entity in the domain layer and the article repository interface definition. So the concept of the domain and the domain entities is the same in both the onion and the clean architecture. However, when we look at the application layer, you'll see a slight difference because the clean architecture focuses on use cases, whereas the onion architecture focuses on services. So in this case, I have three use cases representing the features of my application project, and I'm going to start with the create article use case. You'll see that I have a command and a command handler definition. This is just my way of defining a use case using the mediator library. But of course, you don't need to be using mediator. You could just define your use cases using regular service classes. Now, the implementation of this use case is inside of the create article command handler, which only injects the repository and then performs the business logic related to this use case. The same goes in the publish article command and the respective command handler. We use the repository to obtain an article instance. Then we do something with the article and we persist the changes in the database. Clean architecture also says that you are not allowed to reference any external concerns in the application core. So we can't use something like an object relational mapper because this is an external concern, which is why I only defined my get article by ID query in the application project. And the implementation of this query lives in the persistence project. So let's take a look at that. So you'll see that pretty much nothing is changed from the onion architecture, except the naming conventions, which is quite interesting. And here is my get article by ID query handler implementation. So you'll notice that it's the same code as we had in the onion architecture, except I'm just using mediator in this case. Now the API is slightly different because I'm using the mediator pattern. And in this case, I'm injecting the I sender service, which I use to send my command or query and then obtain a response from the respective handler. And then I can decide what I want to return from my API. One more thing I want to comment on is the dependency injection configuration, especially related to mediator because I have my handlers in more than one assembly. You just call the register services from assemblies method and specify the respective assemblies one by one. So in this case, I have one assembly for the application project and another assembly for the persistence project. I'm going to leave a few articles in the description from Jeffrey Palermo and Uncle Bob, where they're talking about the onion and the clean architecture so that you can do some research on your own and then come to a conclusion about how these architectures are different. In my opinion, the onion architecture and the clean architecture are interchangeable and they represent the implementation of the same concepts. You have your domain layer at the core of the architecture and you're following a strict rule for your dependencies. The dependencies can only point towards the center of the architecture and this ensures that you are following the dependency inversion principle. If you enjoyed this comparison between the onion and the clean architecture, then make sure to smash the like and subscribe buttons and until next time, stay awesome.